What we're going to be going over here is where we're going to have two temporary differences that result in a deferred tax asset and a deferred tax liability. And what we're going to add into this problem here is we're going to have a beginning balance in both a deferred tax asset here and a deferred tax liability. So what are our temporary differences here? First, we're going to have an excess tax depreciation over book depreciation of $60,000 here for year X1. Everything is in thousands here when I've got the 60 here represents 60,000, which it's going to reverse itself here over the next three years here by 20,000 per year. And then our other temporary differences is we're going to have some rent here of 25,000 received in advance here in X1, but it's going to be earned in X2 here for uh, book purposes here. And again, we're going to have a deferred tax asset here of 8,000, the beginning balance of 8,000 here and a deferred tax liability beginning balance here of 5,000. So let's look at what we're going to be going over here. So first what we're going to be doing is we're going to have to calculate our both our deferred tax liability here and our deferred tax asset. So for our deferred tax liability here, for tax accounting purposes, we're going to have taken this depreciation expense here, the total 60,000 here for in the year X1 here. But for book purposes, there's our financial accounting, there's going to be no depreciation, none of that 60,000 is taken here in that first year, but it's going to reverse itself here, the 20,000 uh, by $20,000 per year here. This is where this temporary difference reverses itself here. And for year X2, we're going to have 20,000 here for uh, financial or book accounting. So it's a liability here because in the next years here, X2 through X4, I'm not showing them here, for tax accounting purposes, we're not going to be able to take any depreciation expense, so our taxable income would be higher here. Okay, so f let's first look at the deferred tax liability portion of that here. So this is where we take the future taxable amount, that would be the total 60,000 here, uh, times the future tax rate. And we'll just say it's 40% here. So we're taking the 60,000 here times the 40% tax rate, that's gonna equal $24,000. So that's our deferred tax liability here on this depreciation expense. Now, for the other item here, uh, our, uh, rent received here. Uh, for tax accounting purposes, the total 25000 here was received in the first year here, but it's going to, and none here uh, for a first year here for book accounting or financial accounting purposes, but it's going to be uh, recognized here for financial accounting in the next year here, a year X2 to 25000 will be recognized, so this temporary difference reverses itself. So this is going to be a deferred tax asset. And the reason we have that here is that uh, in the second year, we're taken, we've included that here as part of our uh, taxable income here in the first year here, and we have to pay taxes on it. But in the second year here, we're not going to have to pay taxes on it for tax accounting purposes. So our taxes are going to be lower than our financial accounting because we have to include it for our financial accounting here when it reverses. So to calculate our deferred tax asset, that's taking the future deductible amount here. It's not actually subtracted, but we're not going to have to include it here in our income for the year here. So we, that's what we call a future deductible amount times the future tax rate. So uh, what our deferred tax asset would be is that 25000 here, the rent received here in advance here, times the 40% tax rate, that's going to give us $10,000 here. So that's our deferred tax asset. Okay, so now let's go and we're going to have to deal with this uh, beginning balance here in our deferred tax liability here and also the beginning balance in our deferred tax asset here. And this is where it comes into effect where we have, we're going to be looking here and concentrating on this tax expense here. And we're really going to be looking at year X1 here. But that's what we're going to, this tax expense here is affected by the beginning balances in both the li, deferred tax liability and a deferred tax asset account. So this is what we're going to be looking at. So let's go down and let's uh, first do our calculations here. So for our deferred tax liability, remember we calculated that to be uh, 24000 here. So we take uh, our deferred tax liability here at the end of the year here, X1, and we're just going to be looking at year X1 here, that was $24,000 here. Now our deferred tax liability at the beginning of the year here was $8,000. So we're just going to compare the difference here. We've had an increase here. Uh, a difference gives us 
24 minus 8 here. We've orig what we call originated here in year X1 here for this deferred tax liability of $16,000. So that's what we would refer to as a deferred tax expense here, where we increased the deferred tax liability here in year X1 by $16,000. 24,000 at the end of the year, and we start at the beginning of the year of 8,000. So we originated or had an increase here of 16,000 for the year. Okay, so now let's move over to our deferred tax asset here. So again, set up it, look at it, and then rationalize it in this fashion here. A deferred tax asset at the end of the year here was, uh, what do we calculate to be here? $10,000 here. And at the beginning of the year here, we had a deferred tax asset of $5,000. So simply the difference here is going to give us what we originated in year X1 here of $5,000, the increase. We increased it from the beginning of the year here, $5,000, to the end of the year at $10,000. So we originated, we had an increase here of $5,000. And that's what we refer to as a deferred tax benefit here, where we increased our deferred tax asset here in year X1 here by $5,000. Okay, so let's further move down here just to uh, understand uh, our related temporary differences, if you ever have to figure this out here. So what we would do here for a deferred tax liability at the beginning of the year here, X1, was $8,000. So what the related temporary difference would be in that case would be the $8,000 here divided by the tax rate here, 40%. That's going to give us $20,000. So what we do, this is for the deferred tax liability. That was that depreciation expense here taken for tax accounting purposes. So we had that amount here of $60,000 that was taken. And if you look at our related temporary difference in the beginning of the year here, $20,000, compare those or subtract them here times the tax rate of 40%, you're going to get $16,000. So that's where we're talking about this increase here in a deferred tax uh, expense here, deferred tax liability of 16000 what we originated here. And that's uh, looking at it in terms of this related temporary difference here. Now if we move over our, to our deferred tax asset, we can do it in the same fashion here. We have a deferred tax asset at the beginning of the year here, X1, of $5,000. The related temporary difference would simply be the 5000 here divided by 40%. That gives us $12,500. Now, you compare that to that, remember that was that rent received here for uh, tax accounting purposes of 25000 here, minus the related temporary difference that was the beginning of the year here to what was sitting in the deferred tax asset of 12500 Take that times the tax rate here of 40%, you're going to get $5,000 here. So that's uh, in terms of our related uh, temporary differences or our temporary differences, and we did the calculations here, you can see here we had that deferred tax benefit. That was that increase of $5,000 here, and that's what we originated as our deferred tax asset here uh, for, uh, in the, for the year here, X1. So that's all related, related on our, based on our temporary differences if you have to uh, uh, understand it in that fashion. Okay, so now let's go up here and let's look at how we would record this here. Okay, so this is what we're going to have to deal with here. We're going to have to have a, uh, we have to first calculate our tax pay payable here for tax accounting purposes here. And then what we're going to do is based on we're going to have a deferred tax asset and our deferred tax liability, we're going to determine what our deferred our tax expense on our income statement is. So that's what we started out with here. We have to determine what our tax expense would be for we're going to be looking at just year X1 here. So, first for our deferred tax asset, the first thing you have to do are excuse me, our tax accounting, our taxes payable. That's the current amount that's payable here at that 40% tax rate. So we started out with our income before taxes here. For our example, this say it was 350000 Then we would uh, reduce that by that depreciation expense. Again, this is for tax accounting here, 60000 And then the rent received here, we have to include that here for tax accounting purposes of 25000 So uh, some totaling those up, our net amount will be our taxable income here of three hundred and fifteen thousand dollars, and take that times your tax uh, tax rate of forty percent here. Your uh, your times three hundred fifteen thousand. You're going to get a tax payable here of one hundred and twenty six thousand dollars. Okay, so that's the first thing you have to do. You have to determine your tax payable here. So credit or increase your tax payable on your balance sheet here as a liability account by one hundred twenty six thousand dollars. Now. 
what we're going to let's we'll go look at this here but understand what's going on here for the tax expense really that's going to be a balancing amount here or we're going it's going to be a plug here between our deferred tax payables and our deferred tax asset and our deferred tax liability so let's look at how we plug the balance here so our deferred tax payable was 126,000 then we would add in our deferred tax liability and that's simply because of the uh, debits and credits here and when we'll look at that further when we get down there and then subtract out our deferred tax asset and based on our debits and credits you're going to come up with a tax expense of hundred and thirty seven thousand dollars so debit or increase your tax expense uh, based on our calculations here at hundred thirty seven thousand dollars now let's go and let's look at that a little closer closer here our accounts here so first off we calculated our deferred our tax payable here credit that hundred twenty six thousand off our what we calculated up above here. Now, let's look at how we'd record the deferred tax asset here. So we take the end of the year here, remember that was 10,000 here on a deferred tax asset here. And then at the beginning of the year, we had 5,000. So we have an increase here of $5,000 or an increase in our deferred tax asset here of $5,000. Okay, so let's go up here this is where you would debit or increase your deferred tax asset here by what that was originated here in year x1 debit it for five thousand dollars okay so then let's look here at our deferred tax liability here and look at how we calculate that here and again this is for year x1 here so we take our deferred tax liability at the end of year x1 here we added at twenty four thousand here and then at the deferred tax liability at the beginning of the year, we had it at 8,000. So we're gonna have an increase here of $16,000 that we originated here in X1. So that's what we would record here for a deferred tax liability here. Credit that here for $16,000. Okay, so we've taken care of our deferred tax liability and deferred tax asset. Now, just to further here to understand this tax expense again here and that's really a plug or a balance that we calculated up above here so let's just look at it here we have a credit here and a tax is payable 126,000 we also have a credit here and a deferred tax liability of 16,000 here so we'd add that in here and then we have a debit of a deferred tax uh, asset here of five thousand dollars so we have the two credits here subtract out our debit of five thousand and this is where we're going to get that plug or that balancing amount here debit to our tax expense here of one hundred thirty seven thousand dollars so that's how you figure out your tax expense here when you have both a deferred tax asset at the beginning of the year here and a deferred tax liability at the beginning of the year so what you have to do is you have to determine what your deferred tax asset would be at the end of uh, end of the year here and a deferred tax liability at the end of the year here make the comparison here to see if you have any increases or decreases and in this case we had an increase in a deferred tax asset and also an increase in a deferred tax liability. Therefore, we increased each of those here. Deferred tax asset was increased here by 5,000. Deferred tax liability was a credit or increased here by 16,000. And then the tax expense was simply a plug. Where tax is payable, we figured that here. And then we had to come up with the balancing amount between our debits and credits here our deferred tax expense of $137,000. Okay, so we've taken care of that. Now let's go down and let's go and let's understand one other thing here. Let's look at our income tax expense section on the income statement here in 20X1. So what we would do is our, in, let's just say our income before taxes, we had that at $350,000 and then our income tax expense for the year that was uh, we'd have we've broken that down between our tax expense here and uh, the current amount here and the deferred amount. So the current amount, that was our tax payable of 126000 Now the deferred amount, that was simply, we've got to look at the our liabilities and our assets here. So for our liability account, we had 16000 here. We reduce it by a deferred tax asset here or deferred tax benefit here by five five thousand so the difference is eleven thousand here so uh, add that you take your current amount here hundred twenty six thousand plus your deferred amount here of eleven thousand some total of them you're going to get a total amount of income tax expense of a hundred and thirty seven thousand and that's what we calculated for our tax expense up above when we 
uh, made our plug in here. Uh, when we plug that or we come up with our balancing amount. And subtract that here for your income before taxes of 350000 So the difference is going to give us a net income for the year here of 174000 So the key is here with this income tax expense, you have to break it between the current portion, that's the tax payable, and the deferred portion here. That was your deferred tax liability minus your deferred tax asset in this case, and the 16000 minus 5000 total of 11000 here. Current plus the deferred portion gives your total income tax expense. Subtract that here from your income before taxes. That's going to give you your net income. And then one other thing here, I've got it. What is the effective tax rate here for that we're paying here? Remember, we calculated everything here on that 40% tax rate. But our effective tax rate, that's simply taking our uh, income tax expense that we calculated here of 137000 divide that by the income before taxes of 350000 and you're going to get an effective tax rate here of 39% versus the 40%. And that's affected here because of the beginning balances here in both, our, in both our deferred tax liability and our deferred tax assets. Uh, deferred tax asset. We were using a 40% tax rate for this problem here, but because of those uh, differences here, we had a beginning balance differences versus the ending balance. We had to, our effective tax rate was in this case essentially reduced here by from 40% here down to 39%. Okay, so that'll take care of our discussion here on deferred, uh, where we had two temporary differences here with a deferred tax asset and a deferred tax liability, but we had to deal with a beginning balance in our deferred tax asset and a beginning balance in our deferred tax liability. Okay, so that'll conclude our, uh, our example here.